Hi, my name is Shannon Grove and I'm a member of the California State Assembly. I represent the 34th Assembly District which encompasses much of Kern County. It's an honor and a privilege to represent Kern County. Did you know that Kern County was the second largest agricultural county in the entire nation? But right now, California is suffering from one of the worst droughts on record. Eventually you'll see at the end of this video how this is going to affect you and your families and your kitchen table. Standing out here with John Gless in front of what you can see is um, dead, uprooted trees. So, John, tell me about your farm. Well, we farm, we've been citrus farming for, I think we started in about 1960. Um, that's what we do. We farm in Kern County and Riverside County. So, these trees that you have behind us, uh, these are old trees? Yes, they are. This, um, this particular area, we're affected by the drought in all the areas we farm, but here we had a, a limited amount of water, it wasn't enough, and we had to pick you know, which grove are we going to let go. If um, you were to get water tomorrow to start growing these trees back, how far away are we from if I knew, that production? If I knew I could get water, a steady source of water, at, at the best case scenario, seven to eight years before they'll ever be fruiting, you know, bearing fruit. So it's not like you could get water and instantly start producing fruit again? No, no. Once these, once these groves are removed, it's, they don't come back in a year. This area, I couldn't get all the water I needed, so I had to resort to what we did here. Right. But in some areas, I have the option. There's people that are auctioning off water, and we can buy it. But the cost, just the cost for a, an acre foot of water, just the cost of the water to grow one acre of citrus will exceed my total farming cost on a normal year. A lot of people talk about water banking or underground ground storage. How come you just don't tap into, throw a straw in the underground storage? The wells that we have right now are down probably 35% from last year. And they're dropping every week. They're just, it's going down, down. And that's the big if. Is it gonna, are our wells gonna hold up throughout the summer? Or are they going to go dry? And if they do, there's gonna be a lot more of this. We're, trying to put in new wells right now in other areas. Uh, there's a waiting line. Right now I'm in a waiting, uh, I've got one going in. I need more than one. The other ones, I'm in a, a, like a six month waiting list. Have you ever in the history of your third generation farming family had to do this? No, you know, we've never gone in through anything like this. You never have? No, you know, and, and paid $1,250 an acre, or uh, uh, an acre foot for water. I'm out here with Larry Starr at Starr Farms. He's a third generation farmer grower on this property. So Larry, thanks for doing this interview. Well, thank you for coming out. So as I look around standing here, it doesn't look like a very profitable orchard. It kind of looks like it's dying. Tell me why we're standing in this dying orchard. Yeah, so these trees, we're having to just let go. I mean, there's probably 15 to 20 years left of life in these trees to you know, produce uh, uh, income to produce jobs, but we're we're going to have to let them go, and we've got about a thousand acres that's in you know in the same situation where we're just letting them. They're just not getting water, and they're just going to die. They're going to die. So now, drought isn't something that you're not familiar with. We, California has been right. through a series of droughts, yeah. similar to what we're going through now. Yeah, but droughts are you know we say drought, and it's funny how back in the day a drought was you know you you would see you know dry conditions and you would deal with it but now now you've got added conditions that are not I don't think I don't think we can blame the weather for I mean t today's drought is more politically driven I think than it is weather related an environmental protection law called the Endangered Species Act is forcing water from the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers these waters previously went to farmers and urban areas. Now this water is flushed into the San Francisco Bay to protect a three-inch fish called the Delta Smelt. This year alone, over 1.2 million acre-feet of water was flushed through the Delta in an effort to protect this endangered fish. That's enough water for three million households and enough water to irrigate 600,000 acres of farmland. 
Does that make any sense? Are these fish really that valuable? Should we always put fish over humans? So I have one more question to ask you. What civilized society destroys its own food source for a three inch fish? Until the Endangered Species Act was really activated and introduced as, you know, as part of the parameters for water in the state, until that happened, we were fine. We, we got through all our droughts with no issues. In fact, they wanted to give water away, power was cheap. Um, and now the Endangered Species Act has sort of come into the, into the parameters. We see that we have water problems now, getting water through the system. We can't even just, there's plenty of water available we just can't get it through the system because of regulatory issues. What would 1.2 million acre feet mean to California farmlands? You can do, you know, hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland could be, you know, in production, hiring people, you know, creating jobs. How do you think um, poor water policy and what's going on in Sacramento and the federal government is going to affect food prices from here and in, into the future? If you start drying up the valley, that's gonna mean higher food costs. I mean, what's causing the price of food to go up is, is the lack of water in the valley. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna either import it from other countries, is that safe? Do we wanna import all our food from Chile? This is just a precursor to so many things of problems. And so you start cutting off the head of agriculture, water, and you say you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna help fix the problem. What you're doing is creating a big, big, I think mud hole for everybody just to die in. I think it's just a big pit that we all start, it just, you just start sliding into. Although this drought is severe, we need to keep things in perspective. California has a long history of droughts and farmers have learned to adapt. So what's making the effects of this drought extremely serious? As Californians, we've been spoiled for decades with quality, reasonably priced foods that are available to us anytime we go to the supermarket. Our children are gonna lose this blessing if water policy in California does not change, California's bread basket that feeds this nation and this world will be destroyed. So what should be done? Demand Congress change the Endangered Species Act so fresh drinking water isn't released into the ocean in a failed attempt to save fish populations. Pressure the governor and legislators to build additional water storage so that surplus from the wet years can be used to sustain California's bread basket and the urban areas during the dry ones and make your voices heard before it's too late.